This afternoon, we're lucky enough to have, be joined by uh, Cambian Networks uh, with their purpose-built wireless solutions for video surveillance, and uh, specifically, Saqid Ahmed is online. Saqid, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Patrick, loud and clear. All right, excellent. So just for everybody, there's actually a couple more people piling into the uh, meeting here, but um, just a quick little agenda. Uh, we're going to have an introduction, talk about the CN Vision uh, product and what it does, why it's different, uh, how it works with DW Spectrum, get into a little demo, and how to purchase CN Vision. For those in the audience out there, um, first, if it's your first time joining us, yes, we will be recording it. Uh, it will be available for uh, replay. It's going to be on our uh, on our website, on our customer webinar page, uh, as well as in our knowledge base and uh, in our social media. Um, You've been put on mute, but uh, by all means, we want to have your questions and try to get to your questions, time permitting, towards the end. Uh, there's a section for it. There's an interface within GoToMeeting to ask questions. Please do, and we'll we'll try to get them uh, to that. Uh, to that end, also on the customer webinar page is uh, sign up for not only just recorded webinars, but sign up for future ones. So be sure to check that out as well. So let's go ahead and, Sakit, I'm going to make you the presenter here. Um, again, uh, good afternoon to uh, everyone joining, and thank you to Digital Watchdog for uh, helping to organize this uh, webinar. Um, as uh, Patrick mentioned, my name is uh, Sakit Ahmed. I'm at uh, Cambium Networks. Um, we also have our senior engineer, uh, Chinmay Keskar, on the call, who's going to uh, go through a demo of this solution um, at this webinar. So um, let me just uh, give a little overview since uh, we have a pretty new uh, audience here on who Cambium Networks is, um, just so you guys get a quick idea of our company. Uh, we're essentially uh, a company that uh, was at one point part of uh, Motorola Solutions. Um, it's been actually quite a while now, uh, in 2011, where we spun out and became an independent company uh, known as Cambium Networks. Um, as recently as uh, 2019, middle of the year, we uh, became a publicly traded company as well uh, on NASDAQ. So uh, we've been at this game for a, a long time in terms of uh, expertise in wireless products, and uh, that's probably what we're uh, known for the most. Um, today, uh, to give you an idea, uh, before we even get into the whole uh, CN Vision and CCTV uh, concepts, uh, Cambium Networks uh, primarily builds and uh, solutions are on hardware software for fixed wireless broadband. Uh, and there's a reason I'm going to go through this context a little bit, is a fixed wireless broadband for the audience here is essentially what provides that internet connectivity, the last mile connectivity. Um, if you live in a, a dense urban environment, there's a good chance you're getting uh, your internet from a AT&T or a Comcast or a CenturyLink or whatnot. Uh, but as you go to the rural areas, that internet connectivity is not so prevalent. Uh, and this is where wireless internet service providers, one of our main customer base, comes into play. Uh, and they'll use our products to connect uh, homes and barns and farmhouses, uh, small communities from a, uh, either a tower that looks like a cellular tower or a water tower and whatnot. Um, so the wireless uh, protocol that uh, handles the data and gets that internet traffic with Netflix and YouTube and all of that playing over it becomes sort of the core strength and expertise of uh, Cambium Networks. Um, I should mention that one of the more prevalent uh, names of one of our products uh, that may even uh, be familiar with some of you in the audience is something called Canopy, uh, which has been our uh, one of our most promising and successful product lines deployed globally connecting uh, you know, uh, millions of homes and businesses uh, wirelessly to provide that internet connectivity. Uh, fast forward, and if you think about this expertise in wireless, uh, we asked ourselves, uh, how does our product uh, handle in terms of uh, carrying uh, CCTV or video surveillance traffic? Uh, and with that, I'll shift us over to the next slide, which is that it does do that job really, really well. Um, our Canopy product, as well as some of our other wireless products today, are being used in uh, various locations uh, in the United States as well as globally. Um, and when this is being used, the distinction that I will make early on about the CNVision purpose-built platform and what we today have is um, 
Our products today are primarily designed for that service provider market. So when you go to use it for a video surveillance project, uh, some of the more advanced complex projects uh, do require a advanced level of radio frequency knowledge, networking knowledge, uh, understanding of our basics and planning uh, and coming, putting all that together. And the wireless component is sort of standalone by itself with no integration with something like a video management system or the cameras and things like that. So uh, you really have to be sort of a pseudo expert that knows wireless really well to use the product. Um, this is where CN Vision comes in. And the purpose of our platform is that we took some of our wireless expertise and created a new set of products with a software overlay that makes it extremely easy to use for somebody deploying cameras in an outdoor environment. Now, we're all uh, coming from different backgrounds, and if you're doing camera deployments today, there's a good chunk of our integrator dealer network that will choose that fiber or copper. But we also realize that digging up the ground or the parking lot uh, across a school uh, campus or a, par a true parking lot situation um, is not economical, right? So the fiber may not be there, the copper may not be there. So wireless does have a play in there. Uh, we believe that wireless play there is only becoming more and more acceptable as people are moving from the analog days uh, to IP cameras and becoming more comfortable. So our proposal is that if we created a solution that was simple to use, a very uh, few set of SKUs, um, planning, network planning, the RF planning becomes super easy, intuitive user interface, and last but not least, integrated with things like a video management system, in this case, the DW Spectrum, uh, as well as some camera integration like OnVIF and whatnot, that that package becomes a much more accessible, uh, user-friendly solution. So this is where CN Vision comes in. Um, I want to again emphasize that our solution is about camera backhaul, nothing more. We're not selling cameras. We're not selling switches at this point. This is really about outdoor camera deployments and backhauling that camera with a purpose-built wireless platform. So with that in mind, let's uh, give you a little introduction to the portfolio. Um, it's a simple portfolio of five SKUs. Um, the concept goes around a hub and a client uh, portfolio. The hub is the center of your universe, to uh, uh, more or less. It's the what you would call a access point or a base station in other terminology. This is the device that is talking to the clients. Your cameras would hang off the client. So you have five SKUs out of which Two are dedicated hubs, as you can see, the Hub Flex R and the Hub 360. And then three clients and the Micro Mini Max R each represent distances that it supports. Uh, on the hub front, I should note that you have Flex R, which represents a flexible configuration that if you attach a third party antenna, as you can see in the far right, you can now have a 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree, 45 degree type of coverage area. The Hub 360 is a real simple slam dunk. If you have a short deployment scenario, such as a car dealership, and you just want to cover a 120, 180 degree field of view, you've got 10, 15 cameras, you throw up the Hub 360, you put the clients on the poles, plug the camera into the switch as well as the client, boom, you're good to go. The video is back all to the Hub. Uh, the client micro, the smallest form factor, it's uh, uh, no bigger than like an iPad mini. Uh, then you have a client mini, uh, which is uh, slightly higher gain there for a little longer distance, and a ruggedized version of these in the Max R. Uh, just to give you an idea from a deployment model perspective, the scenario starts looking like this, where you take a Flex R, you attach it to some third-party antennas as well as cambium antennas. If you want a 60-degree coverage, within that you hang multiple clients. Under each client, you can have different types of cameras uh, that are able to backhaul. The solution as a whole, you're looking at uh, bandwidths of 600 megabits per second. Um, and given that camera deployments are relatively short distances, uh, you're in great shape in being able to backhaul multiple cameras over any one of these radio links. 
as I was talking about the clients, another very simple deployment model is what we call point to point, which is pretty easy to understand. If you just really just have one camera that you're trying to back call, you may choose to just use these three devices as a point to point link with the micro going up to a mile, the mini up to four miles and the max are up to eight miles. Um, so all in all, a very relatively easy deployment model and hopefully easy to uh, track. I want to spend a little bit of time because when we talk wireless um, in the security industry, uh, there is a tendency that people associate wireless with something bad or something Wi-Fi like that. Oh, it's just Wi-Fi. It's going to be not reliable or not consistent. I cannot put my mission critical video on this Wi-Fi stuff. Um, so I kind of put this slide together. We've talked to many uh, different types of audience on this. Is that C Envision is not a Wi-Fi system. It's not going to be a system that's going to be interfered by your local Starbucks or somebody's Wi-Fi blasting away from inside their homes. Um, there's a bunch of things in here. I won't go through this in, in detail. But when I talked about the Cambio Networks heritage on wireless, what we do for the service provider industry, the proprietary protocol and the nature of it, that's what's coming together in C Envision under the hood. So whether the fact that we are a proprietary protocol and deterministic in nature and not contention based gives us a big advantage because that video feed is always going to be transmitting. We don't have a chance to check for other people transmitting. We will transmit all the time. Um, the range here says up to a 40 mile range. We just limited it uh, for the sake of deployment examples to that one, the three and five mile range, but you can actually go further than that. Things that you hear about quality of service, uh, interference mitigation, all of that is done with a proprietary software layer that creates you know, zero frame loss and adaptive modulations and things like that to make sure that that mission critical video is going across the link in a very reliable manner. Um, what you'll see in the bottom two is something we're very excited about that, um, and the demo will speak volumes in this, but we've added a OnViv client in the camera themselves so that the uh, client and the hub can detect the camera through an OnViv protocol discovery as well as replay the video stream, which adds a troubleshooting uh, data point for you. And you'll, you'll see that in the demo. Last but not least, one of the main purposes of having this uh, presentation is our integration with uh, DW Spectrum and really presenting the wireless backhaul component in the same single pane of glass you're used to, which is the video management system. So if you're looking at your cameras and you're looking at uh, the health of your cameras, you would want to see the health of your uh, critical backhaul infrastructure from the same place. And that's really the idea behind the integration. I'll kind of go through that with a demo. And this actually is uh, sh shifting us towards that, um, a, a screen capture of the uh, video management system. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there's a tile being added for a client and a hub um, while it's sitting right next to an actual video feed looking out somebody's home window. Uh, on the very far right, you see these event types, communication loss, client, MAC address. Uh, this is all being pushed out by our devices to the DW Spectrum IPVMS. Uh, so as you're looking at your cameras from that IPVMS, you're also able to see critical information from the client and the hubs. <clears throat> the functionality of how it works is pretty simple. And this is a good visual also for a deployment perspective. You have a client which may go down to a IP67 type NEMA enclosure inside which you'll have a PoE switch, uh, a PoE brick which will power the client while the cameras are powered there. Wirelessly, that traffic from those cameras will be sent over to the hub. The hub is connected to the switch which is onto the cloud um, or wherever it is on the internet. And ultimately, if the IPVMS is sitting somewhere over here like the DW Spectrum client, we are seamlessly passing data right to the Spectrum, uh, DW Spectrum client um, without your any intervention from you. So there's a little bit about setup that we'll go through in the demo, but it's very simple and quick. Okay, with that, let's get to the uh, exciting part. And we are going to shift over and 
move you over to the demo part. I will stop sharing my screen and Chinmay, you will now have the demo. Okay, so okay, we can see your screen. All right, thank you, Sakit. Okay, so the in this demo, uh, we are going to be working on this topology, simple topology, sitting in our office, where I'm going to be logging into this PC on which we have DW Spectrum Video Management System server running uh, on this at this IP address, listening on this port and the credentials. So this PC connects to the hub Flex R, which is one of our hubs that connects to the client mini wirelessly. And on the Ethernet side of client mini via this switch, we have two cameras, a camera and the Hawa camera connected. So let's get into this PC and then a web UI of uh, CN Vision Hub Flex R. Okay, so that's uh, Hub Flex R right here. So we're logging into the hub and the yep. very first thing you see is the uh, dashboard UI. Um, as you can see here, we have a couple of speedometer looking views, which kind of tells you the consumed, total consumed throughput of those cameras coming through. Um, and I promised Chinmay that I would talk over him every now and then, yep. and <laughs> that's what I plan to do. Um, but we agreed he won't mind. Uh, but as you see down below, you have your CN Vision detected cameras and this is what the OnVIF reference is. Um, and what's happening here is the uh, pretty simple here, to be honest, that uh, the OnVIF discovery protocol is going to the cameras, discovering some information, and then showing the hardware type, location, et cetera. So whatever you're configuring the camera is getting picked up and being displayed under the client. Um, why is this nice to have? I, we we feel that if you're deploying a pretty uh, you know decent me medium sized network and you have a bunch of hub and clients uh, at any given point if you want to see well which uh, cameras are under what client well this is one way you can able to just log into a client and say oh I see these are the cameras that are uh, associated on the network the second thing you see here is that the two buttons in color one has a little camera icon the other one has a reboot. Um, the power cycle icon is actually an on-wave command to reboot the camera just in case if there was a, um, you know, some type of lockup or some issue happening where on -wave or the camera software is still responding and needed to reboot, that's one way to do it. Uh, Chinmay, if you want to proceed with your uh, video stream demo. So in this situation, what Chinmay is doing is he clicked on the uh, video feed button, logging in with the same credentials as the camera credentials at which point we're actually tapping into the uh, video feed coming from the camera. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, it's our uh, office, which we called home for many months, but no longer is, uh, is it more a remote place now, uh, but it's just looking at some uh, cubicle boards. But this is a camera feed that we're tapping into and replaying uh, right in the uh, hub and the client's user interface. Uh, the benefit of this, from our perspective is, uh, and Chinmay, maybe you can speak to the two benefits because you, you highlighted this quite well at an earlier presentation. So, yep, uh, okay, so a cou couple of examples. Uh, so one one simpler uh, use case of how this can be useful would be, let's say when you are uh, doing the installation, uh, when you connect your clients to the cameras, your installer can right away log into the client to check whether the camera has been detected or not. Uh, also, when the client connects wirelessly to the hub, you can log into your hub to see whether cameras are detected or not. So that gives you uh, like additional help while you are doing the install. Um, secondly, and more importantly, or uh, I should say more uh, useful use uh, case for this on integration would be for troubleshooting. Say one morning you see that uh, on your VMS, you don't see your camera feed. And uh, so what to do? So your reaction would be, could be to send a technician to the location to see what's wrong. Here, if you are using CN Vision solution, it gives you additional step to uh, for debugging. So before you send out your technician, what you could do is log into your backhaul radios, which are the CN Vision devices, and see whether the cameras are detected or not, and whether you can replay the video stream or not. If you can, then that tells you, hey, so everything is working fine all the way. 
from the camera up to my back hall point so uh, that gives you this on with integration gives you an ability to troubleshoot or i should say extra step for debugging in case things go south thanks okay, Jimmy. So. and before you move to vms integration if you don't mind just uh going through tools and kind of highlighting the watchdog stuff um so one of the things i wanted to highlight is overall the user interface is meant to be simple um so there's some things that can if you want to get deeper into the wireless side of things you certainly can but if you don't want to that's a very easy option you just go through a quick uh, start wizard and set up a link and uh, we have lots of videos for this stuff to be able to do and what he's highlighting here that i wanted to showcase is something like a watchdog where you enable it and you're able to ping, let's say, any address on the network. Um, and if, if, if there's something wrong with the hub or the client behavior-wise or some lockup issue, you can actually initiate an automatic restart of the Ethernet interface, restart the device, et cetera, et cetera, um, as another advanced troubleshooting. Um, obviously, there's things like spectrum analyzers and software upgrade utilities. Uh, monitoring of uh, wireless links, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, lots, of, lots of stuff available, all presented in a simplified manner. Uh, so only if you want to go deeper, you're able to. If you want to stay simple, you go for that. OK, let's move ahead to the VMS integration. So this is the VMS integration submenu. Uh, what Shinmei here is doing is he's enabled VMS integration, the VMS agent, we call it. And the VMS type, he has chosen the DW Spectrum VMS. He's put in his IP address, port number, username, password. And with that, um, down here, he's also have an ability to generate a link. Uh, we'll talk about how we use that link in a few minutes once we actually go to the VMS. So all yours on that front. Okay. okay. So here with the VMS integration, we can do two things. So with this, this part, uh, your radio has a capability to send events to the VMS. So when you have all this configured, now this radio is ready to send events to the DW Spectrum VMS. And let me quickly show you the demo of what uh, we can do. So I'm going to go to monitor wireless to see this client connected as you saw in the topology to the hub. If this client was to disconnect wirelessly from the hub, what, what's going to happen here is hub is going to send an event to the DW Spectrum VMS, which can be seen as a notification or an alarm. So if I were to go to hub and disassociate client wirelessly, you're going to see that notification. So for the purpose of the demo, so imagine that the hub and the client here, the, the topology map, they're obviously in a lab environment. But imagine this is actually a remote location with a, a 500 meter link. Um, and your client goes down for whatever reason. Uh, or your camera feed goes away. And the whole idea is, well, if the backhaul is the problem or something happens there, you want to be able to get that alarm and statistics or the update of the status in your DW spectrum. So for the purposes of the demo, Chinmay is actually forcing a deregistration, saying, hey, client, I want you to no longer be connected. And what happens there is uh, immediately the hub is saying, oh, something happened to my client. It's sending an alarm over to the DW spectrum saying the operator initiated this uh, uh, alarm uh, and that's the whole idea and, and then the tile goes away along with that uh, so this is one of the one of the nice integrations and obviously as uh, you enable additional features such as alarms that go out via sms or emails and things like that all of that is honored by us because we're essentially just sending information to dw spectrum the second part here that uh, we're going to demo here is this uh, this is a dynamic html link essentially uh, that's creating a uh, linkage between DW Spectrum and our product. Um, and what Chinmay is doing here is essentially creating a new uh, web page uh, with that dynamic link and giving it a name, HubFlexR. Uh, once he hits OK, it instantaneously pops open up another tile, just like as if you added 10 more cameras. And in that tile now, we're sending information and it's dynamically getting updated. Uh, IP address, how long has it been up, uh, the negotiation speed and the downlink uplink consumed throughput. Uh, which we felt that this type of integration, again, this, the idea of a single pane of glass, that as you look at your cameras, if you wanted to see the health of your hub or the client, 
this is where you would take a look at it. Uh, one of the scenarios you can imagine is that uh, if your camera deployment ended up consuming, let's say, you know, 20 megabits per second, and your link is uh, pulling 20 megabits also, uh, but then you start seeing some degradation and your camera's flickering, you go to your tile and say, oh, wait a second, my wireless link is now closer to 16, 17 meg, something is up. This is probably why my cameras are going out or the resolution is scaled down because my backhaul is not able to keep up. This is, this is the differentiation fundamentally. Like every other wireless product that you'll see in the marketplace is really just a wireless product. So you either learn it inside out and you use it as a standalone solution um, or you don't. In our case, we are taking some of the really awesome proprietary under the hood stuff and, and wrapping it up with some nice integration, nice usability features so that the whole CN vision becomes part and parcel to a system integrator or security integrator's day-to-day -day life. If they're gonna deploy wireless, this wireless is now part of their everyday solution, not just some complicated unknown stuff that they have to learn from scratch. Um, that's the whole idea. Anything else on the demo? Yes, actually you do. Yes, the companion tool. And to make it a little easy to plan, uh, one of the things we've done is we've taken um, uh, the, the, the calculation. There's obviously lots of tools out there that say, hey, how much uh, hard drive space do I need on my NVR, camera bandwidth calculators, resolution, et cetera, et cetera. But there really isn't anything that says, well, if I want to put up one, two, three, five, eight, ten cameras, how much bandwidth do I need for a backhaul system? Because let's face it, backhaul wireless system. Because let's face it, that at the end of the day, the wireless backhaul system still has some uh, uh, com com complexities because it is radio frequency. There's distance limitation. There's line of sight, non-line of sight uh, interference. So how can we bring that uh, and make it easier? So what you see here is where Chidmay has essentially said, you know what, I will start a new project. Um, he added a device called Hub 360 CK. Um, under that, he put a client called the client, client zero. And then under that, there's another client called client one. Under client zero, sorry, Chinmay, I'm probably going out of sync here, but under client zero, he went ahead and added camera zero. And you can name these whatever you want. And in camera zero, Chinmay, if you don't mind editing the parameter, In camera zero, he said, hey, the resolution of this camera is gonna be two megapixel. You have a whole slew of options there. The compression is H.264. And within that, you can also do a few different options. Frames per second. You can plug in the device lat long, which is not mandatory. And when you save that, um, we are calculating how much throughput that camera is going to need. And if you notice, all the way up top where it says the Hub 360R, in max uplink throughput, there's a number that says 112.82 megabits per second. And next to it says used uplink throughput, 13.216 megabits per second with 12 person utilization. Which is the addition of this camera seven and plus five, which is right. total of 30, yep. Go ahead. Um, exactly. So, so what we're doing is we're saying, okay, tell me what cameras you want, what the characteristics of these cameras are. We'll calculate the throughput the camera is going to need. We will tell you, and actually, uh, we we missed the one part that on the client characteristics, Jim, if you don't mind clicking on the edit client characteristics, he's already put in information that the distance to the hub is 141 meters. He chose the device type. He chose which country you're operating in, I guess. But 141 meters away, we did the calculation behind the scenes and said this is the megabits per second uh, that our radio frequency link is going to need. Um, so again, the summary of this tool is uh, trying to bring the wireless calculation side of the house and combine it with the camera requirements and present a comprehensive story to you, uh, making the planning part easier. Uh, this tool is just out, uh, available for download uh, shortly from our website, on our support site. 
and uh, we're looking forward to some feedback from our integrator friends as well and uh, uh, looking for ideas to improve and make it uh, even more user friendly. I think that is the uh, end of the demo for us, right, Jermaine? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you hold, uh, if you can just stay on the screen for a second, a couple other things I wanted to highlight. Uh, mm -hmm. That, from a Cambium Networks perspective, a, a few other things that maybe Patrick, you can chime in as well as uh, first and foremost, we we do have things such as a, uh, a full-on support organization. So in terms of having to, uh, you know, to call somebody and, and and talk and get support on your deployment or wholesale support. Uh, we have that facility. There are players in the wireless industry that uh, you know play by the pure cost aspect and all community-based support uh, without mentioning names, and uh, we're a different beast from that. Uh, we're providing live support uh, to our hey, customers. Hey, guys, this is uh, Paul. It was one of the questions hey, I was going to ask, so thanks for clearing that up, and I know the price player you're talking about, and one of my complaints was calling them and there's no one to talk to. You've got to do it all by email or do it in a blog. <laughs> so, right. And it's uh, typically another my, customer responding. So thank you. No problem. Paul. Right. No problem. I was, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. No problem. Uh, so, yeah, support is a big, big one. And in fact, you know, in, in, in these early stages of this introduction, we're also helping with some of the pre planning and deployment uh, planning as well. Uh, there's a three year hardware warranty associated with the product line. So, you know, with up to three years after you purchased it, we're still going to honor the warranty. And then last but not least, I should highlight that we just wrapped up a, a pretty interesting uh, certification class. Um, and what we attempted to do was, while, the, while it was a very CN Vision centric class, uh, we added a, a, just the right amount of wireless basic uh, training, some networking training and some camera basics all tied in together into a nice uh, packaged uh, self-paced class um, that will help you and your customers uh, to become more comfortable with the wireless side of things. Uh, so this is uh, the, some of the non-product centric uh, attributes that we're offering as a company and, and part of the overall solution. And last but not least, there's probably a, a big question on, uh, you know, what does this stuff cost? Uh, the tool you're looking at on your screen is free. Um, listening to our webinar pitch is free. Uh, the product prices range uh, from about $199 to uh, $399. Those five SKUs all fall within that. Uh, so it's nothing exorbitant, but we're definitely not the uh, lowest price product, but we feel that the feature sets that we've put together uh, creates a pretty uh, compelling value proposition. So with that, Patrick, Paul, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. If you guys want to have some questions, have a little conversation, or see what questions have come up from the audience. Yeah, thanks. So the um, the, the first question I've got that has, has come in, I think, would probably be solved if you went back to your uh, presentation, um, back to slide five with the uh, with the lineup of your products. Tim, uh, if you don't mind moving me back to presenter. Sure. Yeah. Just to kind of go over some uh, some distances, I know uh, from a through, throughput standpoint, you mentioned the hub is you know um, so it's a point to multi point and capable of 600 megabits, so you can get quite a few number of cameras through that uh, at that point there. Okay, but in terms of uh, uh, distance, is, you know the question is about the uh, Unobstructed line of sight for a mile, four miles, eight miles, that that type of thing. So maybe you just kind of go through your. I can, yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can uh, kind of highlight that. So that's a that's a that's always a good question. I kind of anticipate that question. Um, <laughs> but camera camera deployments, you know, let's face it, it's not going to be in the middle of an open field staring at nothing. It's going to be in urban to semi-urban environments, and you guys are always going to run into the line of sight versus non-line of sight type situations. Uh, the best way to think about wireless is, first and foremost, line of sight is always good. It's, it's the preferred method. But that doesn't mean that it's always going to be limited by line of sight. It's really about if I'm standing around the corner and you are on the other side and I'm, I'm talking to you, 
um, at a regular voice, you're not going to be able to hear me. But if I start speaking really loud, my voice may bounce over off the building across from me, and you may actually be able to hear me pretty clearly. So radio frequency and wireless is the same story. It's it's the it's a function of power, the antenna gain, uh, and basically your ability to scream. So line of sight is preferable, but what we call near line of sight, where you may have a little bit of obstruction, maybe you'll have some trees. Um, in all of those cases, things can work, and that's where the planning tool comes into play. Now, non line of sight. If you have a multi-story building that's you know 5,000 square feet uh, in size, no, you're not going to be able to get through that. Where what you do in that situation is you use a couple of devices, put them on the pole, one pointing to your primary link, one pointing to the secondary link, and you go around the building. You have to end up using an additional unit, but there are ways to get around that. Um, some people in this call, as they hear me say that, probably thinking, oh, okay, is it mesh light? No, it's not mesh like because mesh is the problem with mesh, which is you know been around for a while, whether it was featured by companies like fire type fluid mesh, et cetera, is that you know you're really using a, a the, the the more or less basic Wi-Fi based mesh systems uh, where you just have multiple radios inside the same hardware and it's trying to balance being able to connect to two sides at the same time. Uh, what we're proposing is actually creating two unique and distinct links with multiple radios on different channels and going around that type of online site challenges. Probably a bit of longer answer than you wanted, uh, Patrick, but hopefully that helps. No, that was perfect. Uh, that, that, that was it. Uh, somebody asked about a 900 megahertz solution. Right. Uh, so the C Vision portfolio, we don't carry a 900 megahertz solution, partly because we, we don't see a lot of applications uh, because of the throughput needs that a typical IP camera will have these days. Uh, however, as part of Cambium Networks, we do carry a 900 megahertz product where you may not get that uh, video management integration or ONVIF, but if you feel comfortable and you have unique cases, we have a phenomenal 900 megahertz product that we sell into our service provider industry that could work very well for the video backhaul. Um, so if you want to uh, contact me offline, I'll be happy to share that. And just back on the next slide, the deployment model for some of the questions that had come in as far as the point to multi-point capability and so kind of mixing and matching with that, uh, with the previous page as far as the... Um, what goes with what? The, cl the clients and the hubs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the, yeah. So this, this can be a little confusing because you're seeing this for the first time, but... There's, if you, if hopefully you can see this across the screen, but you kind of have this three distinct colors. Um, think of the two pink color ones that those are always going to be hubs, meaning whenever you want to create a hub and spoke type network topology, those first two guys are going to be your hub. So they're doing the aggregating, let's say. The clients are essentially what they are, clients. They talk back to the hub. So with the first two line items in the pink, you can use any one of those next three to attach to them. All those three goes on a pole, down to a switch, with cameras plugged into them, they're backhauling the traffic back to the hub. The part where things get a little interesting is the flexibility we give you, the client, the micro and the mini, can also be configured as a hub in the user interface. So if you said, you know what, I don't really need a 360. I don't need a little flexible with an antenna. These are all too bulky. I just want to use a micro and just a couple of other micros. So essentially, you can take the micro. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but imagine that this has now become a hub, and it's going to talk to its peer, whether the mini or the max are, or another one of its kind, another micro, another two micros. As long as it's within the field of view, you can do this flexible mode of configuration. And you know, yeah, exactly. and, and we'll help you with that in the initial projects for sure. So I was walking a, a, a school, all right, and the, the, they wanted to deploy cameras around the school, and then they get at the high school, and they get to the football stadium, and the football stadium is you know, across the parking lot, essentially. Right. Uh, and naturally, you know, football field, you got stands on both sides, press box, and so forth. So. Essentially, what you know to kind of draw it out as an application, the hub is going to be back on the building at the gymnasium where they already have the connectivity. Right. And then the, the clients are going to be on the grandstands on either side of the field, and then you're going to wire your cameras into that. 
uh, in terms of on that net, create a create a network for the grain stands on the north side and then feed them back in through that client over to the hub. Yeah. So um, and next question just came in in a point to multi point scenario where a facility has 10 cameras in the parking lot. Can the building only have one antenna to receive the signal? Yeah, exactly. So somebody just asked the same question in yeah. terms of what I just drew. I drew out that, yeah, you can have 10 cameras in the parking lot, correct, being brought back to one of these, one of these clients. And then the client is communicating to the hub and there's one hub back on the building receiving all the signals. The only trick is if your 10 cameras are all in, they're probably going to be in slightly different locations. I'm going to assume in the parking lot, right, Patrick? So you may need right, right. Uh, one client. You can maybe on that location have two or three cameras. Another case, you have one. Another case, you have four. So you may need two or three clients. In each case, the client's pointing back towards the hub on the building, and each client has the required number of cameras hanging off of them. Right. So even though your each one of your clients has a throughput of 600 megabits, you might be using 200 per client, but you might have multiple two clients. or three clients yeah because right. it all depends Talking on where the cameras on that are yeah if cameras are not right. on the same pole yeah. then you don't have a choice but to have uh, multiple clients correct yeah okay um and really the next question i there's a slide uh, about where you can purchase the envision um coming up i know we didn't get come back to that yeah, one in the powerpoint us, um maybe we somehow was it past the demo slide after ah, right there there it is. 